I'm going to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Anna Spirafico, who is part of the Phase One program, and uh, she also treats uh, melanoma and head and neck cancer. Anna is an assistant professor at the University of Toronto. She's going to actually highlight two of our flagship programs in uh, in TIP. They're called Inspire and uh, Metador, and she'll tell you what these acronyms represent. Anna, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. So on behalf of the uh, entire tumor immunotherapy program, I'd like to um, uh, talk today about uh, um, the INSPIRE and the Metador um, Princess Margaret initiatives. So uh, INSPIRE is an investigator-initiated study of uh, single-agent pembrolizumab uh, in advanced solid tumor looking at immunological response, responses. So this is a single center study, uh, non-randomized. Uh, approximately 100 patients uh, uh, will be enrolled in this study. Uh, the uh, patient population include uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck, triple negative breast cancer, type two epithelial ovarian cancer, melanoma, and a mixed cohort of uh, uh, advanced solid tumor patients who will receive, uh, are receiving actually, pembrolizumab uh, every three weeks. The uh, primary objective of this study is to evaluate the changes in the genomic and immune landscape in patients with uh, uh, advanced solid tumor. Uh, and secondary endpoint include uh, the evaluation of anti-tumor activity, uh, evaluation of circulating tumor DNA, and uh, literally uh, several radiomic uh, imaging analysis, immunoprofiling surveillance, and several in vitro uh, predictive assay that we'll talk about um, in a little bit. So uh, this is a biomarker driven study. So the patients to be eligible, they have to undergo mandatory biopsy at baseline and I don't think I can, yeah. anyway, at baseline and uh, during treatment. And really uh, they have to have uh, tissue available in terms of quality and quantity for uh, the analysis. The patient received the treatment every three weeks. Uh, the imaging is performed every nine weeks, and at each cycle, the patient also undergo, uh, undergo collection of uh, 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 blood for the um, blood biomarker. At uh, disease progression, the patient may undergo an optional biopsy. So this study has been open since uh, mid-March this year, and so far um, we have accrued uh, over 50% of uh, the patients. As you can see from the summary table, some cohorts ha have accrued uh, almost 75%, uh, such as the solid tumors and the ovarian cancer patients. But it is, um, this table really tells us that uh, the accrual is it's quite fast and quite successful so far. Um, as I mentioned, this is a biomarker-driven study. Some of the patients uh, uh, enrolled in the study, the, the patient um, type, uh, tumor types, we already know that pembrolizumab has activity. So really here, the main aim of the study is to perform a very comprehensive uh, profiling, molecular profiling, genomic profiling, immunological profiling, to really understand at the tumor level and microenvironment changes that can occur um, upon um, treatment with the anti-PD-1 and really try to understand the mechanism of uh, uh, resistance or sensitivity in these patients. And this explain, as you can see from the table, the extensive uh, tumor and blood uh, biomarker that are performed uh, during uh, this study. So now uh, I wanna just uh, briefly um, present uh, two cases, and then uh, Derek along the way will uh, talk about some of the um, preliminarily interesting results that we have, uh, we have seen. This is a 73 years old uh, patient with metastatic melanoma, presented a couple of years ago with a lesion on his back that uh, started from February, started to grow and ulcerated. Uh, he had initial biopsy in April, and that was positive for a spindle cell carcinoma, so was sent uh, to the expert, um, the sarcoma expert in Monsina. A second biopsy was performed and was actually consistent uh, uh, with uh, um, diagnosis of melanoma, undifferentiated type. 
At the time of staging, he was found to have metastatic disease uh, with involvement of the lung and mediastinum, but uh, the largest uh, lesion was actually the cutaneous ulcerated lesions in his back. He was uh, uh, consented as starting on Inspire in July, so far has received six infusion. He has tolerated the treatment very well with only uh, grade two uh, hypothyroidism and is on uh, uh, replacement, hormonal replacement. He has undergone a first restaging scan that has shows a 31% uh, decrease in target lesion. This is seen, uh, we see that quite commonly in uh, patients with melanoma. And literally yesterday evening had uh, the second imaging uh, after the six infusion. So I don't have the formal TMs, but I'll show you the results of the, the imaging. So this is uh, his uh, uh, primary with a, a large ulcerated lesion on the back and there are some satellite nodules that are growing. And then this is just to give you an idea of uh, how the lesion has evolved during treatment. Uh, you can see that cycle two, there is a tumor frail with increase of, uh, of the lesion. And then by the time of cycle three, uh, the time when we biopsy and we also perform the um, imaging review, we, show, we, we see a, a shrinkage of the tumor. And uh, literally when we saw him uh, um, last week, uh, we saw that his wound is almost completely healed. And the similar response has been seen also in his uh, lung metastasis where you can clearly see a shrinkage uh, of the lesion. He carries on with treatment so far, uh, is doing well. The second patient I'm going to uh, discuss with you is a 43 years old patient with metastatic solitary fibrous tumor. He was initially diagnosed in October and had initial surgery followed by uh, radiotherapy. Uh, he recurred in 2015 with uh, um, a neck mass that was biopsy proven to be a grade, um, grade three uh, hemangioparasitoma. At that time, uh, an imaging was uh, performed for staging and it was found to have uh, uh, metastatic disease to lung, mediastinal, bone, and liver metastasis. He underwent a series of uh, palliative treatment such as, sorry, that was bad. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Imaging uh, palliative treatments such as uh, the palliative radiotherapy, palliative uh, surgery, and then undergone two lines of treatment, including um, a clinical study with uh, uh, an aurora kinase inhibitor, and then uh, pazopany, and then afterwards he was enrolled in the INSPIRE study. He, has, uh, um, rece he received a seven uh, infusion. Uh, he tolerated treatment well, no major drug-related adverse events. Um, initially, it was found to be um, clinically deteriorating, so there was an early imaging that shows that actually this, the disease was stable but some increase in target lesion from baseline. And overall, it did not uh, have any shrinkage. His disease remained stable but some increase in target lesion. And unfortunately, he then uh, passed away uh, in September for progression of disease. And as you can see here is a series of imaging uh, throughout his uh, treatment from baseline when he had his biopsy, and then post cycle three when he had uh, the second biopsy, and Derek will present uh, some uh, uh, lab's results um, uh, on this case as well. So now I'm gonna move uh, on to the uh, Metador. This is a second um, investigator-initiated study. It's a very important study in our institution because the basis of this study has been developed uh, in-house uh, by Dr. De Carvalho, who is in the audience, and I'm sure he's gonna be happy to answer any question regarding all his work that he has published uh, in Cell last year. So please don't ask me. There's a lot of pressure right now to talk about the science behind here since uh, the expert is here. Uh, but basically, Dr. De Carvalho and his team uh, using correct cancer model has uh, been able to demonstrate uh, that uh, is a cytidine, which is a demethylating agent, targeting the, can the colorectal cancer initiated cell lines, inducing the formation of double strand RNA and activation of uh, MD5, uh, MAVs, and IRF7 uh, pathway. And why is this important? It's important because, uh, um, in other words, is a cytidine uh, is able to treat the cancer cell 
to um, behave uh, such as uh, virally induced cells and induce viral mimicry state. This is important because as a cytidine, uh, as a demethylating agent, has had limited uh, uh, single agent activity in solid tumor. But uh, Dr. Carvalho and his team have been able to demonstrate that uh, uh, this agent may increase the immunogenicity of cancer cells. And uh, uh, in this uh, graph, we can see that after six days of the cytosine exposure, the, um, there is uh, an upregulation of PDL1 and PDL2 and uh, expression and proliferation of uh, uh, CD4 positive and CD8 um, positive T cells. And why is this important? It's because uh, uh, the intent and the hypothesis here is that uh, uh, with isocytidine, we can increase the immunogenicity of cancer cells and uh, uh, be able to synergize with the uh, uh, other immunotherapeutic compounds um, to have better responses in some tumor type. So Metador is a single center phase to study of uh, uh, selecting patients with uh, microsatellite stability colorectal cancer, platinum resistant ovarian cancer, and ER positive, HER2 negative uh, uh, breast cancer. Uh, these patients will receive treatment with CC486, which is a oral as a cytidine, and then following the treatment uh, uh, with as a cytidine, we'll receive, uh, uh, receive uh, durvalumab, and I'll talk uh, to you about the schedule in a little while, but the um, rationale of selecting this patient population as uh, has been previously mentioned, uh, this tumor type uh, really have not uh, had uh, great responses uh, in, uh, um, uh, with the immunotherapeutic compounds. So really here the aim is to uh, try to increase the immunogenicity of these, cell, these cancer cells. The primary objective is to evaluate the anti-tumor activity of the hypomethylating agent in combination with Durvalumab, according to RESIS version 1.1, uh, and two secondary objectives include evaluation of the safety and tolerability, the anti-tumor activity uh, by immunorelated RESIST. Uh, there's uh, several exploratory um, objectives, uh, including tumor methylation status uh, and correlation with the response and we'll talk about uh, that uh, in a few uh, minutes. Um, just to summarize uh, the treatment, patients uh, undergo mandatory biopsy at baseline and during treatment. They, for the first 14 days they, in, in cycle one, they receive oral azacitidine, and on day 15, uh, they receive durvaluma, which is then received every, every month. We're trying to prime the, uh, uh, the cancer cells here, and we're doing it for three cycles, following which patient will continue on uh, Durvalumab. Uh, a series of uh, blood biomarker collection is also performed throughout this uh, study. This study opened uh, at the beginning of September, and uh, here is a summary of our enrollment. We have enrolled five patients. We're really treating this study as uh, almost a, a phase one study. Um, so our accrual is not as uh, fast as uh, uh, the INSPIRE study for a safety uh, reason. Um, and again, as uh, INSPIRE, this uh, study is a biomarker-driven study, so there's uh, multiple uh, tissue and blood biomarker with extensive study, including the global DNA methylation. Uh, just, uh, to, um, uh, just to give you an idea, this, uh, these are very complex study to run. Uh, we have uh, to have the engagement of different departments. Everyone who is involved in this study has to be engaged. And uh, aside from a weekly meeting, the tumor immunotherapy program has created this SharePoint, which is a very useful tool to have an idea of the accrual update, to have uh, uh, access to uh, any um, uh, protocol uh, documents uh, and uh, um, any information that uh, really make uh, the study to run uh, smoothly. 
And with this, I want to uh, thank the entire tumor immunotherapy program, the patients who are, uh, our patients who are very committed uh, uh, as well. And uh, I'll uh, take any question later. We'll, we'll take only one burning question, because if not, we'll save everything for the panel. Okay. Thank you, Anna. You can take your page. Yes.